What's up guys and welcome back to what is the first Project Cars video on my channel. It wasn't the video I was planning to start things off with, um, but it's hopefully going to be a video that you guys are going to find helpful because I have been pulling my hair out with this. Um, and what we're going to cover in this is the settings I'm using for the force feedback on my Thrustmaster TX wheel. Um, I've spent many an hour since releasing has been released uh, trying to get these dialed in and try and get it to a level that it is actually the car can be driven and you get some force feedback for the wheel it's not perfect for me it's not 100 percent it may still need a bit of tweaking on this but hopefully the pointers i can give you on this may get you in the right direction if you're struggling a little bit um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go into options what you need to remember there's two lots of force feedback settings there's the main game ones and then there's each individual ones for the car so when you've done the game ones that should be pretty much it and then each time you do the car you have to change the force feedback for that depending on the car as well. It will differ for each car, um, but I'll go over that in a minute. So you want to go on to controls. And you want to go also on to configuration. So you want to move across. So you've got control screen, control scheme, configuration, and edit assignments. So on the configuration, you've got the steering dead zone. I've got that as zero. So as soon as I turn the wheel, it turns the wheel in game. Steering sensitivity, this is something that I have to play about with quite a lot. When I first got it, I put it on 100% and the car, or I put it on 100 and the car was very, very, very twitchy. Um, so I've slowly moved it down to about 40%. So it's how much input you have to put into the wheel and how, basically how much it turns the car. If you have it 100, it becomes very twitchy and if you lose a back end, it, 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 it's basically, you can't save it. Um, so something that works good for me is about 40%. That's something that you guys might have to um, tweak yourselves and just move it. It goes up, up and down in 5% five, five increments. Um, so 40 works for me, but a little bit less or a little bit more might be good for you depending on uh, your uh, how you drive. Also with my wheel, I've got my wheel set on 900 degrees as well. Um, so I've got that full rotation on that. Uh, the throttle dead zone, I've got that at zero. Total sensitivity, 100. Brake dead zone, zero. Brake sensitivity, 100. Clutch dead zone, zero. Clutch sensitivity, 100. Pretty basic, so I've got full travel on all the pedals and uh, maximum and minimum levels. Speed sensitivity, I've got that on zero. Controller filtering sensitivity, I have no idea what that does. Um, I presume it goes towards the Xbox One controller, uh, but I've got that on zero. And damper saturation, I've got that on zero as well. The first proper force feedback setting we get is that one there. So we've got that on 100. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that RPM gear display is on there, but I've left it on there anyway. Uh, so yes. Control input mode. Um, you've got 1, 2, and 3. Again, I have no idea what difference they make. Cause it, there's no explanation for it. I haven't found anything that makes any difference. So I've left it on 3. If anybody knows what the difference that makes, please, please, please put it in the comments below um, to help me out and other people who are watching this video as well. Um, oh, these ones at the bottom, I'm not 100% sure what I've done, so I've been tweaking with them a little bit, and I've actually turned I've turned the advanced on, but then turned all them off as well. Um, and basically, if you turn that off, it just turns them all off anyway, so I've effectively got that turned off. Um, but that's everything that I've got set up in-game. You'll probably notice that the video's just jumped from that screen to this one. Uh, it's because I forgot to put this part in the original recording and it's a very important part of the setup process. So I want to make sure I include it. Um, so I'm adding this bit in afterwards. Um, so once you've done everything that you've just seen, I'm going to come back onto this screen and you want to press the right trigger and calibrate force feedback. Now this is where it gets very, very, very confusing. And you can see on screen, we've got explanations of what everything does. And if anybody understands that, you are a genius and my hat goes off to you because I don't understand a single thing of any of that. So what I've had to do is just go through trial and error and mess with all of these options. So you can see with the options for the previous screen, these options and then the options you'll see in a minute for the individual cars, there's probably about 30 different force feedback things that you can change. What they all do, I have no idea, so I've just done trial and error. Um, but this is what I've got mine set up as. So, tyre force 200, per wheel movement 0.35, per wheel movement squared 0.35, wheel positioning smooth 0.05, dead zone removal range 0.15, dead zone removal fall off 0.10. I won't go through them all, but you've got the linkage scale and so on so far. Force. I'll just scroll down so you can make a note of them um, and apply them to yours um, again if anybody knows what any of these actually do because the explanations don't help whatsoever relative adjust presents torque to the wheel based on the change in torque over time rather than being absolute torque 
I'm, I'm sure people do understand that. Yeah, it might be me being dumb, but I have not got a clue um, what any of that means. Um, but this is the second stage for the force feedback thing. So copy all the ones that you've just seen, do these ones, and I shall go back to the original video now, which will show you the in-car ones. Um, the pain in the ass bit sometimes is when you back out of this, it does take a long time to save, and it doesn't do it now, so that's good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is going to show you the actual car force feedback settings so i've just got hockenheim gp with the palmer jaguar uh, set up uh, so we're just going to load that up i'm going to go over it um so first impressions of this game as well while we're loading up is i quite like it i quite like it a lot i think once i've got the the, the handling side of it and the force feedback exactly how i want it it'll be pretty much perfect um, I've had a race with a few guys from the forum, we had a lot of fun using the Group B uh, Capris um, and it is very challenging, um, the weather looks fantastic, um, it's got a lot of the options that the racing fans have been asking for um, and if you're thinking about this, if you're sitting on the fence going do I get it, do I not get it, I'd probably say go with it, spend the money, get the game because um, you, you will enjoy it, if you enjoy Forza then it, think of it Forza on steroids, um, it's probably a good way to put it. Um, so when you're in your pit box, go on to edit tuning setup and you see straight away we've got all the options um, down here to tune your car. We're not interested in it at the moment, we're going to go press the RB button and we're going to go on to force feedback. So this is force feedback for your car. Now this is how I've already preset this up. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what these do but I'll give you what I think they do. Um, and hopefully you can tweak it from there again. If you know what these do, or you, you work out what they do, just put it in the comment section below, help me and others out as well. Um, so the master scale, it gives you a little bit of description of that. It says the master scale determines the magnitude for how the tyre forces are represented through the force feedback. Uh, so the, the, the forces are going through the tyres when you're driving. The lower you have that, the less force feedback you'll get. The higher you have that, the more force feedback you have. I found for me anywhere between 28 and 40 works well for me depending on the car it will be different for every car that you do as well um, so bear that in mind um, and then we've got the FX scale the FY scale and the FZ scale now FX I believe is side to side on the car so left to right FY will be front to back um, and FZ will be top to bottom so if you think of all the different ways the tyre can move um, whether it's uh, left to right uh, forward and backwards up and down then these are how much force is generated to the force feedback for each one of those individually. It's very complex. It, I don't know if it needs to be this complex for the force feedback model, um, but it is very, very confusing. So if you think every time the car turns right, the tyre will actually move under load. So that will be the FX scale, I believe. Um, every time you potentially accelerate or brake, that could be the FY scale. And when you go over curbs or anything, that could be the FZ scale. So you can try increasing these little by little to see and then testing the car out on track and see how you get on. Uh, the MZ scale, uh, it says that, let's find it on the screen now, um, the fraction of tyre twisting momentum fed into the force feedback system is governed by the MZ scale. The expl explanations on this aren't the best. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what that does. So I've left that at the stock levels. Um, just try tweaking it a little bit, lower it, higher it, see what works out. I'm still gonna hopefully do an update video on this as well once I've worked out all a little bit more um, and dialed things a little bit better but I just want to try and get this up to you guys so if any of you are struggling you can try and use these and hopefully get to you in a situation where you can actually drive and enjoy the game a lot more all the smoothing ones I've got all them set to zero um, just so I've got the full feeling of the force feedback in the wheel um, you can try adding these on though I think that one starts at 10 start off with but I've just dropped it down to zero. It works for me, whether or not it works for me it's something that you have to do trial and error. And then we have the arm angle. Now, there's no explanation for this at all. Um, and I've done a little bit of research online. Um, the arm angle is the first bit of steering that you do on the wheel. So if you think maybe 45 degrees to the left, 45 degrees to the right, um, it's how how much feedback you get within that area. Um, if you have that quite low then you get a bit more feedback so it, the wheel's not so loose in the middle um, and if you have it higher then it obviously makes the wheel that little bit looser in the middle before the force feedback kicks in again it's going to be trial and error on what works for you and what works for the car um, I'm not going to say that these will work for everybody um, for this one for me a thousand works fine um, it does go all the way up to uh, about 
4,000 is it? Or 4,500. Um, but if you're not unsure what they do, just go to the extremes and try it out on that. It'll probably give you a better idea of, of what it does rather than me. But I find anything where between 1,000 and maybe 2,000 works well for me depending on the car and how we get on. So that is basically the force feedback. So the force feedback in the game options set up um, and leave um, once you're happy with it. And then these are the individual ones that you set, have to set up per car. It will change per car um, and you will have to change depending on your, your style. Um, I believe it saves it to the car as well. So if you go off and load another car up and then come back to this one, it will have those settings in there for you. Whew. Tell you what, it's force feedback like on public cars. It's hard work, man. very, very hard work. But I hope this has helped some of you out. Uh, if it has, um, please just hit that like button below because I've spent about five or six hours uh, since release trying to tweak these, get it to a level that helps me um, so I can help you. Um, and if it does, let me know in the comments below. If you get an improvement on it or anything you think works better, let me know in the comments below because it will only help me. It will also help others that watch this video and then read the comment section below as well. Um, so hopefully between us all, uh, we can get some decent settings that will work for the majority of people. So there you go guys, first project cars video, force feedback settings for my Thrustmaster TX, don't forget to have your, feed, uh, your wheel on 900, that's what I've got mine set on, that's what I've got these settings set up for, um, I hope it helps you out, let me know if it does, and I'll see you all soon.